Hello and welcome to Decentralized Health Administration at the Ubrika Project. My name is Dr. Masharia Waroingi. I bring you critical technical knowledge about creating perfect codations for much needed revolution in health industry. Under these new codations, universal health access will be possible. Everyone in the world, including you and your loved ones, will have access to universal health, to the best health possible. Now, health for everyone will be of the highest quality there is in the world, and you will be able to afford. And of course, it will be affordable by all people. Again, as usual, I come to you each and every day from Ubrika Project located at 1.4 degrees south of equator and 37 degrees east of the central meridian that is somewhere uh, about, about the southwest suburbs of Nairobi. And thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome today. Today I have great things to discuss with you. Number one, we discuss about Kenya's blockchain and artificial intelligence task force report. There's juicy news about that because the task force, which was um, appointed by President Uhuru Kenyatta under the Ministry of Information Tech, Information, in, Information and Communications Technology, has released a report indicating that Kenya should go full throttle on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. That is great news. So Kenya is now a cryptocurrency nation. That is awesome. So the report was uh, released and of course out there for public comments. And also we're going to talk about artificial intelligence part three today, expert systems, machine learning and natural language processing as a part of continuing learning uh, from the book accepted from decentralized health administration under development by Susan Yabura Jogona in Ubrika Research and Development Team. But first the basics. We know now that Ubrika project strives to solve three fundamental problems of health production in the world. Number one is that of lack of access to health services. Number two, poor quality of medical services. And number three, high cost of medical services. Lack of access to health services occurs when people do not have money to go to hospital. And lack of access to health also occurs when there are no hospitals to go to. Poor quality of medical services occurs when good knowledge to deal with medical problems is scarce and high quality, high cost of medical services in most of the world occur when manufacturing of products that can improve human life or human health is stifled. We solve the problem of access due to lack of money by creating Sokojanja.com, an online retail store where anyone in the world can sell what he or she has produced to increase earning power. We see that money in the pocket is realized access. So when there's no money, there is no access to health. Now for physical access, Ubrika clinics and hospitals project ensure access to the health services because when you're hospitals and clinic, you can go there and get uh, treatment or advice. Ubrika's science and technology parks create places for translation and commercialization of new and relevant knowledge ensuring the best quality of medical services in the world. And the Ubrika Biomedical Industrial City promotes local manufacturing of biomedical products, reducing the cost of medicines and medical devices and health services in general, making healthy, making health affordable to all. Ubricoin itself, the UBN, the cryptocurrency for universal health access, underwrites health production in the Ubrica ecosystem. That means that when you're in there, you will, you will afford to have access to health. You can support universal health access by getting and adding Ubricoin to your portfolio of cryptos or by getting equity in the Ubrica project. Get involved, do not sit on the sidelines of health. Buy and hold, at least $10 worth of UBN each and every day. And of course, you'll be on the mainstream of supporting universal health access. You can get even more involved by joining the World Ubricoin Ambassador Program where you gain deeper knowledge about Ubrica project and continually share that knowledge with people in your circle of influence. As an ambassador, you'll, have, you'll be the bridge between Ubricoin, Ubrica, Soko Janja and the people in the world. So I request you to get involved as usual. Hit the like button to cement your support. Hit the bell button so that we can you can subscribe to the channel and receive notifications and then participate in the chat where you share your views on how we can decentralize knowledge in health and medicine. And now to today's topics, today's news. Today, well, we received yesterday a report from uh, the Blockchain Task Force, Blockchain Artificial Intelligence Task Force by the Kenyan government. And we're just going to go briefly with the recommendation. First of all, their recommendations are positive. So Kenya is 
blockchain and cryptocurrency friendly. Yeah, Kenya is blockchain and cryptocurrency friendly, and that's very, very important. It means that all you people in the world who love blockchain and cryptocurrency, you can come here to Kenya, come to Nairobi. We'll give you a place to stay. Let's do build a very, very big blockchain community. Let's build a very big cryptocurrency community. Let's, let's get the developers out there. Let's get the traders. Let's get everybody. Now, if you are a, a blockchain enthusiast, this is your chance to migrate somewhere nice, where you have nice climate, nice uh, trees, wildlife, everything you like, plus blockchain, plus cryptocurrencies. And of course, uh, the fact that Kenyan government has said positive things about blockchain and cryptocurrency is uh, it means that uh, we have a very huge opportunity to accelerate the growth of these technologies so that we can catch up. Obviously, after this, in two years, you will see a remarkable difference. And this is real good for UBN itself. Ubicoin is a cryptocurrency that is designed and developed here in Kenya, uh, has now a major opportunity for blast off. Let's say we have, it's now on the launching pad. And of course, over the next few months, you want to see a major blast off of the UBN. It's now gears up, gaining momentum to head towards the moon. Okay? So right now, we're on the countdown. 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and blast off. UBN is heading to the moon because of positive things that the task force has said. And of course, it also, the, the fact that the task force has en embraced blockchain and artificial intelligence, said positive things about it, it means that Kenyans. The popular Kenyans, Kenyan people are going to respond positively. This gives a lot of encouragement to continue working on the blockchain space and uh, cryptocurrencies. And of course, also the individuals themselves. So we are talking about two things Kenyan demographics, let's say, and we know that Kenyan de demographic majority of the people are millennials. It's a young population. I hear sometimes uh, about 75% of the people in Kenya are below the age of 35. That is just the millennial generation. And we know that blockchain technology is a millennial phenomenon. This means that blockchain and, and cryptocurrencies in Kenya will take off like a rocket. So get ready. If you don't have UBN right now, get your UBN today because the price is going to change dramatically. Right? So the task force also recommended for, <laughs> recommended for a digital cryptocurrency, digital sovereign cryptocurrency by the government of Kenya. And this, the, the task force says that that currency will be accessible and can be tradable globally in line with what the G20 summit ministers recommended. So that where, where does that leave the central bank? We do not know. Maybe the central bank will be responsible for creating that sovereign cryptocurrency, which is good. That just increases the amount of money in Kenya. But we say the more the merry. Other recommendations by, uh, by the task force include the fact that blockchain will help to eliminate corruption because blockchain is transparency and immutable. It will help to minimize the national debt, of course, by, through, by creating digital assets. It will help to strengthen democracy and elections by offering in real time immutable polling results. It will help to facilitate financial inclusion and reduce transaction costs through national payment gateway on blockchain. It helps to improve the public service delivery using a single source of truth. And of course, it helps to create digital sovereign cryptocurrency like M-Pesa. M-Pesa is a digital currency in Kenya, which operates, operates by Safaricom. But now we're saying that according to the, 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 the blockchain task force, that we Kenya should create a digital currency like M-Pesa that is tradable outside Kenyan borders with other global currencies digitally. Right now, M-Pesa doesn't do that. We know that Kenya shilling is traded, but M-Pesa is tied to Kenya shilling. So we're talking about a different digital currency like, 
like in PESA, which it's actually tradable outside in and of itself. So it can gain its, its own value. <clears throat> the blockchain, according to the, the task force, will have to deliver affordable housing and a location that matches buyers and sellers. All right. I mean, I guess those are uh, other applications that are not uh, cryptos. It will help to improve health and drug safety by tracking and tracing medical supplies and delivery. And we're talking about the blockchain function of supply chain. It will help to expand manufacturing and eliminate counterfeits by increasing visibility across manufacturing value, value chain. And then it will help improve cybersecurity by fully decentralizing domain name systems and distributing content drastically reducing the attacks from hackers. And it will help to improve land titling by digitizing and tokenizing land assets and creating immutability and increasing transparency uh, on the blockchain. And it helps to improve cross-border trade that reduces shipping delays and ensures better and transparent tax remittances uh, through on the blockchain. Quite frankly, I don't think the government should be doing all that stuff. In fact, the government should do none of that stuff. The government should focus on providing services to the people, not building blockchain. That's the work of the private sector because the government will never manage it. What we want to see in Kenya is a very vibrant private sector in computer science and blockchain, not uh, government trying to centralize the blockchain to itself. That's never going to work. A centralized blockchain is the same as a central government, and it doesn't deliver much. But what we are very happy about is that the government, um, this recommendation th that Kenyans should adopt blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies and that is really, really good. So looking at artificial intelligence, the next topic of the day. And now today we are talking about part, part three. So today we are on the third part because if the first part talked about artificial intelligence itself. And the second part, we talked about artificial intelligence in health medicine. And today we are talking about expert systems, machine learning, and natural language processing. And I guess this material is accepted from the Decentralized Health Administration textbook under development by Susan Nyabura Jigona in Ibrika Research and Development Team. Now, in artificial intelligence, we have three key technologies that include expert system, machine learning, and natural language uh, processing. An expert system is a software that uses databases of expert knowledge to offer advice and make decisions in such areas as medical diagnosis. Expert system on blockchain would be to support development in the field of global health. So, what we intend to do, you the proper and appropriate use of Ubricoin, is to build expert system that apply, <coughs> that support clinical decisions in diagnosis and treatment. We call these clinical decision support systems. It means that expert system is a um, system built by knowledge from doctors. So, when the doctors put enough knowledge there, because doctors are experts, then the the software can help to develop a system for helping doctors to make decisions about the diagnosis and treatment. For some disease conditions, a clinical decision support system can, perf can perfectly replace a human expert, particularly for people living in remote locations where expert medical care is not readily available. Kawamoto, Julian Balas, and Lobak in 2005 evaluated the ability of decision support system to improve clinical, clinical practice. In that study, they assessed 70 studies for, um, for statistically and clinically significant improvement in clinical practice and for the presence of 15 decision support uh, systems. Uh, 15 decision support system features whose importance has been repeatedly suggested in literature. Guess what they found? They found decision support systems significantly improved clinical practice in 68% of the trials. And that's really good. The others recommended that clinicians and other stakeholders should implement clinical decision support system. That was like, what, um, 14 years ago. And why have, don't we have clinical decision support system here in Africa? Because we don't have money. But now we're going to have money. We have UBN. So money is very important. And so, of course, we need to mobilize the physicians and surgeons in African continent to help now gather or, or gather data so that we can put it on their 
uh, or these databases are on the blockchain. So Ubricoin is very important because we can reach experts so that who can contribute data to the databases. And we know that this expert system will strengthen decision support, particularly for clinicians practicing in remote locations. How about machine learning? Machine learning is a scientific uh, study of algorithms and statistical models that computer systems use in order to perform specific tasks effectively without using explicit instructions. That's relying on patterns and inferences instead. It is machine learning is seen as a subset of artificial intelligence. And machine learning algorithms built on mathematical and mathematical model based on sample data known as training data in order to make predictions or decisions without being expl explicitly programmed to perform a task. Machine learning algorithms are used in a wide variety of applications, such as email filtering and computer vision, where it is feasible to develop an algorithm on specific instructions by performing the task. Machine learning is closely related to computational statistics, which focuses on making predictions using computers. Artificial intelligence is already you being used to predict, to predict, model, and slow the spread of diseases in epidemic situation. According to Claire uh, Freyfeld and Brownstein, of, in 2009, automated surveillance of internet providers uh, of the internet provides a timely and sensitive method of alerting global emerging um, infectious disease threats, which we talked about yesterday when talking when talking about pandemics. For example. HealthMap is a part of a new generation of online system designed to monitor and visualize on a real-time basis disease outbreaks alerts as reported by online news media and public health sources. HealthMap is of specific interest to national and international public health organizations and international travelers. However, <clears throat> HealthMap does not go as far as switching down to families and individuals, and that's where now we can we can start training our machines how to do these things. A particular task that makes such surveillance useful though is automated discovery of geographic references contained in, in the retrieved outbreaks alerts. This task is sometimes referred to as geoparsing. A typical approach to geoparsing would demand expensive training corpus of alerts um, manually tagged by a human being. And that's where UBN comes in. This expensive passing expensive training corpus like body let's say expensive training body of an uh, expansive training body of alerts manually tagged by human all these humans who are tagging uh, these alerts need to get paid with what do you pay such people ubn and so we are very lucky and we're very excited again because kenyan government through the blockchain and artificial intelligence task force has just released a very positive report. And this means that UBN is right there along with what the task force recommends. And so not only is, is that going to help UBN gain value, we're gonna have positive attitude to from the people in Kenya and we then get adoption of UBN. And so, and that means a lot of price and we can use UBN to pay for the humans who are needed to tag the, the huge corpus of a lot expansive training corpus of a lot for machine learning okay so in order for machine to learn it has to be trained that's what we are saying so we have to gather a lot of data and then human beings go sifting that data tagging it and say this one is important this one is important and then when that when, when that data is fed into the computer it helps now to make life it make decisions on whether there is an epidemic coming or not right so what about natural language processing natural language processing is the application of computational techniques to the analysis and synthesis of natural language and speech two ways in which natural language pro processing is extremely being explicitly being used to address global health challenges include one surveillance and two outbreak predict predictions using data from electronic health records and online media and social media sources. So this, this means that natural language processing 
uh, has data collected from all over the internet. And of course, that's a lot. Tori et al. in 2011 investigated automated detection of articles relevant to disease outbreaks using machine learning classifiers. In a real life setting, it is expensive to prepare a training data set for classifiers, which usually consists of manually labeled relevant and irrelevant articles. That's what we were just saying, that machine learning is gonna need humans. But now natural language processing means the machine itself is sorting out that information. So what did Tori et al do? They examined the use of randomly sampled and labeled articles as well as labeled relevant articles. They proposed a text classification framework that used randomly sampled and labeled articles to facilitate cost-effective approach to training machine learning classifiers in the real uh, in real life internet-based biosurveillance project. You know, and I believe that Tori et al they have done a great job and what we're going to do is fight the money in Ubricoin to have people who can create much a lot much more um, robust software that can do this type of work very very efficiently or let's say effectively natural language processing is also being used to analyze unstructured text in medical literature and um, electronic medical records support clinical decision um, making i would say clinical decision support or track population health behavior so we are very very lucky and we're saying that we need to have these technologies available here in Africa to expedite the diagnosis. Math, Frenzy, Mathy, and, and their colleagues in 2011 also evaluated a natural language processing such approach to identify post-operative surgical complications within a comprehensive electronic medical record. They conducted a cross-section study involving 2,974 patients undergoing inpatient surgical procedures in six veteran health administration medical centers. From, from 1999 to 2006, what did they find? What did they find? They find that among patients that are going in patient surgical procedures at the VA medical centers, natural language processing analysis of electronic medical records to identify post-operative complications had higher sensitivity, higher sensitivity, but lower specificity compared with patient safety indicators based on discharge coding deriving from the National Classification of Diseases, the ninth revision. So you can see. In, now that that has been the last decade but I, I believe that now things have really improved and now with cryptocurrencies we're going to get even better improvement because it takes a lot of money to do this type of research natural language processing has been used for active computerized pharmacovigilance using electronic medical records in one study when uh chris back in mark Makatao and friedman in 2009 analyzed narrative discharge summaries from Clinical Information Systems at New York Presbyterian Hospital, and they applied something called MEDLE, M-E-D-L-E-E, -E, a natural language processing system to the collection or to the collection of the, the data to identify medication events and entities which could be potential drug adverse events. So they could have, could have potential adverse events. Are the used uh, core co-occurrence are statistics which adjusted volume tests to detect associations between two types of entities to calculate the strength of association and to determine their cutoff thresholds. They selected seven drugs uh, which are drug classes including ibuprofen, morphine, warfarin, bupropion, paroxetine, and rosligatism AC inhibitors with known anti, with known ADs, you know, I mean, adverse drug events to evaluate the system. And they found that 132 potential adverse drug events could be associated with the seven drugs. Their work provides framework for development of active, high throughput and prospective system, which could, could potentially unveil drug safety profile throughout uh, its entire market life. You can see, this is very, very important stuff because we do not have, well, here in Africa, we just do guesswork sometimes because we don't have the technology for clinical decision support and even for pharmacovigilance. You can have very serious adverse drug reactions that can end uh, somebody's life. Natural language processing and machine learning are also being used to guide cancer treatments. Can you believe that? Karel Halgreen, Train Buist, and, and Shapman and Savova in 2014 hypothesized that natural language processing 
could substantially reduce the burden of manual obstruction of studies that um, examining outcomes like cancer recurrence that are documented in unstructured clinical context, such as progress notes, radiology reports, pathology reports, and the like. They developed a, language, a natural language processing based system using open source software to process electronic, electronic clinical notes from 1995 to 2012 for women with early stage incident breast cancers to identify whether the recurrence were diagnosed, to identify when the recurrence were diagnosed. They developed and evaluated the system using clinical notes from 1,472 patients receiving electronic health record documented care in an integrated health care system uh, in Pacific Northwest. We're talking about Seattle and those areas. A separate study provided a patient level reference standard for recurrence of what? So my computer is acting up <clears throat> for, for recurrence status and date. So we're seeing a separate study provided patient level reference standard for recurrence status and date. The National Language Processing Based System are correctly identified 92% of the recurrences and estimated diagnosis dates within 30 days for 88 of these. Specificity was 96%. And the National Language um, Processing Based System overlooked five of 65 recurrences, four because electronic documents were unavailable. So the National Language Processing Based System identified five other recurrences incorrectly classified as non, non, non recurrent in the reference standard. They found that if used in similar cohorts, natural language processing could reduce 90% of the number of EHR charts abstracted to identify confirmed breast cancer recurrence cases at a rate compared to traditional abstraction. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, you're gonna get uh, it's gonna get better when we put it on the blockchain. Signal processing is rapidly growing with, with rapid expansion of mobile devices that can capture and transmit signals. Specific opportunities of um, specific opportunities currently focus on signals that can be collected with mobile phones. This means you're now we're talking about Africa. So specific opportunities currently focus on signals that can be collected with mobile phones on single function and add-on devices that link with mobile phones or uh, multi-purpose instruments that can collect multiple kinds of digital data. Such signal processing opportunities are critical to clinical success in global health, particularly when paired with machine learning principle, principles uh, on the blockchain. As we become more connected and uh, produce data of higher quality, the ability of AI to address global health challenges will expand tremendously. As the UBN grows in value, several technologies will be created to monitor disease patterns in populations and medical data to recognize patterns that could potentially identify pending outbreak epidemics and pandemics. Yeah, so there we have it. So today we, we, we discussed about, um, uh, we discussed about expert system, which helps us to make clinical decision support system, machine learning, which means we can train our computers to become even better at diagnosing, and then of course, natural language processing. So I wanna leave you there. And of course, that's very heavy duty information. It's just that we are getting there, of course, uh, with Kenyan government um, having a very good positive report on blockchain from the Blockchain Technology Task, Blockchain Artificial Intelligence Task Force, uh, saying that blockchain is good for Kenya and cryptocurrencies are good for Kenya. This puts UBN in a very, very high position and it means that it's going to help deliver all these things because we have 20 billion units of UBN and 20 billion units of UBN getting high value. Very important because we wanna be able to build all these things, particularly uh, for artificial intelligence on the blockchain. So finally, back to the basics. You see that Ubrica project strives to solve three fundamental problems of health production in the world. Lack of access to health services, poor quality of medical services and high cost of medical services in most of the world. Lack of access to health services occurs when people do not have money to go to the hospital or people do not have hospitals to go to. Poor quality of medical services occurs when good knowledge to deal with medical problems is scarce and high cost of medical services occurs when manufacturing of products that could be used to improve life is stifled. We solve the problem of lack of access due to lack of money by creating socalljaja.com, 
an online retail store where anyone in the world can sell what he or she has produced to increase earning power. Money in the pocket means realize access to health care. Ubica clinics and hospitals project ensure universal access to health services, where Ubica's science and technology parks create places for translation and commercialization of new and relevant knowledge, ensuring life and the best quality of medical service in the world. Ubica Biomedical Industrial City promotes local manufacturing of biomedical products, reducing the cost of medic medicines, medical devices, and health services in general, making health affordable. So to underline all that, to underwrite all that, UBN, the cryptocurrency for universal health access, makes Ubrica project possible. And of course, makes uh, health production in a Ubrica ecosystem possible. You can support universal health access by getting and adding Ubricoin to your portfolio of cryptos or by getting equity in the Ubrica project. Get involved right now. You hear, you've heard what Kenyan government has decided. Do not sit on the sidelines of health. Right now is the time to buy UBN. If you don't know how to buy UBN, um, you need training. You can send info. You can send a question to info at ubrica.com, info at ubrica.com, and ask, how do I get this UBN before it goes to the moon? Because, as you've heard of the Kenyan government uh, report, what is going to happen is that UBN will just take off like a rocket and its price will go up so high that you'll be asking yourself, why didn't I not get involved? In fact, you can get even more involved by joining the Ubicoin, uh, the World Ubicoin Ambassador Program. That is W U A P, and of course by writing directly to W U A P at ubrica.com, where you gain deeper knowledge about Ubrica project and continually share that knowledge with people in your circle of influence. As an ambassador, you learn to bring, uh, you learn, you be able to, you you be the bridge between Ubrica, Ubrica and Sokojanja and all the people in the world. Again, I would say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to what we had to say. And of course, today we are celebrating the, the, the blockchain, the report by the Blockchain Commission in Kenya, uh, which gave very, very positive, positive feedback about cryptocurrency and blockchain, saying that Kenya should adopt blockchain and cryptocurrency. In fact, going all the way to recommend that the Kenyan government creates its own sovereign cryptos. Very nice. That's all for today. And we look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. Goodbye, goodbye.